if you're running in time attack, drifting, or sports sedans, and you want front guard pumped out to the max, but you can't buy them, here's how you can make your own. Although I made these flared guards into a uh, one-piece front end, the sculpting technique is virtually exactly the same when you're just making a pair of flared front mud guards. What I'm focusing on in this tutorial is how to sculpt these large flares. So I won't repeat the copying of the full mud guard that I've done elsewhere. You'll find other videos in my fiberglass tutorial library specifically showing me moulding and copying a pair of finished sculpted front mud guards. My reference point in starting to sculpt the new Phase 4 flared guards is the existing ones on the front of the car. These are extended out 60mm so I can come out and run another 40mm to take full advantage of the rules. So this wheel will be out a lot further. Bearing in mind this car runs 14 inch wheels as a standard road car, you can see I've got an issue here with these 16 inch wheels racing tyres touching the top of the guards. So I want to raise this point up so it's there. So that's my sculpting starting point. And what I've done is I've positioned a flare I used for moulding the rear guard overs where I want it to be. So it's about 25mm higher there, but it follows the radius of the factory guard's curve. And you can see that's up as high as it can go. You can also see it's a whisker under that 100mm max, about 95mm. Haven't got a set of flares like this to get started? Go to your local four-wheel drive wrecker and get a set of flares in Australia off a of Holden Rodeo. Here's the overseas equivalents. When you're looking for flares off a four-wheel drive for a race car, avoid the ones that are squarish. Go for the round ones and try and find the smallest diameter arch that you can. I've grafted flares like this on a countless cars. It's the fastest way to make pumped out guards. <laughs> I've also checked to make sure the new extensions line up compared to the rear guard overs and you can see it does that after I did a little bit of work. I've got to attach this flare. A lot of guys would just take this up and use pouring foam. And that's a messy way to do it. The rules allow me to put vents over the front wheels along the top of the fender here. So what I'll do is sculpt these vents on a bit of tin and glue that in place using it as the bracket to hold my flare onto the factory guard. Then I can go around and start filling in all these gaps. I'm not too worried about shaping the front of the flare yet as it'll probably be cut there and come into the front spoiler lip. So this part here will be sculpted when I design the front spoiler. But this shows you just how wide my new front air dam will be able to be. There'll be a lot of air feeding through there.
again about my front mud guards. And they say, an opening is permitted between the rear of the wheel arch opening and the trailing edge of the mud guard. But it also says, in side view, no part of the vehicle inside the mud guard may be seen through the opening. What's that mean? Well, you can put a vent here, but you can't see the chassis of the car. So when you're at the angle that this camera's at, you've just got to be able to see bodywork, not the internal parts of the car. So I've cut this guard, factory guard, and uh, bent it in to make a, a, a big rear vent here to get the, the air out from behind the wheel arch, because this is a problem area where a lot of air builds up at high speed on a race car, particularly when you've got big flares like this. So you need to vent that air out. This green tape line here, I might mention for the first time, because of these rear arch extensions at the back and because this is going to be a flip up front end, I found in the past that if you've got flares back here and you try to flip the end up, these foul the tyres. So I'm going to sculpt all this. This, the flare and the guard will be part of the bonnet, but this panel here, I'm going to cut it in half here after I've sculpted it and make it two pieces. So this, this bit here, this triangular portion of the rear guard will be a separate bit on its own and there'll be a, a join there where the, uh, where the front clip comes down. But for the purposes of sculpting at the moment, I'll just leave everything together and that way all my lines will blend nicely. You can see cutting that panel and folding it in, it's going to let a lot of air out of there. So I'll just sculpt three sides in tin like I did with the top vents. The advantage of a, a removable guard like this, obviously, is that I can take it on and off the car to do parts of the sculpting. So I'll take it off and put uh, the three inside edges on that vent. Here's the guard sculpted, just roughed out. Obviously got a lot of sanding to do and the final finishing, but the shaping of it's pretty well finished. I've got that vent there and I can actually cut that hole out right to there so I can make it as large as the rules will allow me. I've got the inner panel going in there. Had to do a little bit of work here to sculpt the bottom of that guard down to the bottom. So the sanding and blending to do there. That's where my dividing line is going to be. I've got the vents in the top. And uh, that guard is certainly, certainly out to the maximum that the regulations allow. But, you know, if the rules allow it, the rules allow it. So that's where the tyres are coming out to. And... Uh, I need to incorporate, I think I need to keep the indicators, I know I've got to keep the headlights, so I'll keep the indicators too, so they'll need to be blended in there, and that'll become part of the lip coming up from the air dam. So, like I said, all the sanding and final smoothing yet to come, but that's, that's the basic shape. That is one monster front guard. <laughs> you can see the tin extension that I added. And I've got the chipboard baseboard, which is 70 mils off the ground, giving me my clearance. You can see where I've added these triangular ribs. They will be clad with a thin MDF sheet, about 3-4 mil thick. And uh, the tricky point is blending the lip on the spoiler up to the flares. And so I've used a series of... Uh, ribs cut out of timber and screwed to the baseboard and the trick in making something like this is when you make uh, when you make one, one rib go over and make the other one 
so I'm going from left to right, backwards and forwards all the time, making sure that everything's made the same way and the same height at the same spacing. That way I'll get the same shape on both sides of the car, which is obviously very important. You don't want one side different to the other. There's lots of trial and error in car sculpting and quite often you've got to cut parts two and three times before you get them right and then even then you've got to fill in the gaps with car bog. Right now I'm definitely at the ugliest stage of this process but if you never see it you'll never know how to do it and you'll never have the confidence to start it and to keep going once you start it.